part of the Press Play Podcast Network. Look up in the sky. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. This is Jason J. Lewis, the voice of Superman on Justice League Action. This is Mark Wayne, writer of Superman Worldwide, and you're listening to The Krypton Report. Welcome to the Krypton Report podcast. I am your host, Tyler, the Man of Steel. No, actually, that's James. My bad. <laughs> but I'm the Man of Tomorrow and the Superman of Blue. And with me is not James. That's why I miss him so bad. But over on another Earth, there exists the Kingdom Come Superman, a man of action. That's right. Even with the uh, white growing up top, Mr. Anthony Desiato. What's up, buddy? <laughs> I feel like I'm getting roasted uh, right off the bat here. <laughs> roasted? You just you just got elevated to Kingdom Come Super. I mean, that's a man of action. That's you, man. That well, it is. That's true. I mean, it is. It is an honor to be to be deemed the Kingdom Come Super. It depends, though, which point in the story we're talking about. Because for a lot of it, he's not that man of action, but he he eventually gets there. So no, I'll, I'll take it. I gotta own these. I gotta own these white temples. I know. That's where I, dude. I'm there too. I just I wear the hat when I record with video because. The uh the what do you call it the headphones keep the hair back it makes my forehead look huge it makes me look like I'm going more bald I'm like dang it I still have hair it just doesn't look like it all right so we'll rewind the man who dresses like Brandon Routh from <laughs> the Crisis event Anthony <laughs> now I'm very uh, happy to be here thank you for having me uh so Anthony and I now as of this recording we're not sure because. Uh, Anthony and I just recently recorded, we discussed the Kirk Allen movie serials. And as in that, which you'll hear soon on his show, Digging for Kryptonite, um, I talked about how I plan on watching the Adventures of Superman, the George Reeves series. And so what I did was after we had watched the serials, I watched the Superman and the Mole Men, which is technically the first movie of Superman, even though it only clocks in at 58 minutes. It is considered a feature, and I watched it, and I messaged Anthony like, hey, let's just talk about it, because I know you had recently seen it um, when you did your George Reeves discussion and everything, and it is a very interesting topic, not only just because of it being the first Superman movie, um, but, uh, you know, we talked about just a little background, Superman and the, versus the Adam Man serial was 1950 Superman the Mole Man is 51 and then the Adventures of Superman TV show would be 52 this film was originally supposed to have Kirk Allen but he wanted too much money so they went out and got this George Reeves guy and I'm not sure how Phyllis Coates entered the picture I was trying to figure it out um, if you know they, they offered to Kirk and not Noel um, but this was done with George, and it 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 feels like an after school special, just an elongated after school special with Superman. Um, but you, before I go too much more, what what are your first thoughts on it? No, I think it's interesting. I mean, first of all, I like the way that you're going about this because you're going chronologically. So. Like you said, we we watched and discussed the Kirk Allen serials. Now you're you've watched Superman and, and the Mole Men, and then I know you're planning to get into the, the the George Reeves series proper. So I basically did it all backwards because uh, I watched the the first two seasons in particular of the George Reeves show first, and then a sampling of episodes from the the color season seasons three uh, through six. And and only recently now watch the serial. So again, I've kind of been going backwards. And I, like we talked about on my show, I think that made it a little bit harder for me to get into the serials because I had this vision of George Reeves and the Adventures of Superman in my head. Now, as far as the Mole Men piece of it, I I have the DVDs as I, I believe you do as well, and they include Superman and the Mole Men as a two parter at the end of season one. So that's the way I watched it, mm. which was interesting because I already had twenty four episodes of the series. And then I had this odd little two-parter at the end of it. But in a way, I think that almost helped because I, I think I was really able to 
fall in love with this version of Superman and Metropolis and the, the Daily Planet over the course of those 24 episodes before. I, not that I wouldn't have liked it if I started with, with the moment, but I, I'm kind of happy that I watched it the way the DVDs sequence them. See, now that was a point I was going to bring up because I think I haven't watched it that way. I watched it with my five, my five, six movie, however you want to say it, Blu-ray Superman box set where it's a bonus feature, the full, you know, movie. And I did it like that because I wanted to see it like that because I knew about like what you had talked about just now that it did come as a um, two part at the end of the series. And I think watching it the way you did, it works because you establish Clark, you establish Superman, you've established Metropolis. And because the, the story starts more like a television, I guess, I guess it was designed to be a pitch for a TV series. And if it wasn't picked up, it was going to be a movie be, because it is just Lois and Clark on assignment going to this well where they're digging for oil in this town and they stumble across Clark realizes that there's tools that are being buried. He's like, oh, there's a bigger story going here as they're closing this this uh, drilling. And then come to find out they dug up phosphorus deep into the earth. The earth is hollow. And these mole men crawl out of it. And they're terrorizing this town. And they're not really terrorizing. They're just, like, lost trying to explore it. And people are freaking out. And this one dude, I mean, he... He's he's ready to overthrow the police. He's ready to overthrow the town. He's like got his mob to hunt these things down. And it goes crazy. And it's interesting because it's all about acceptance and tolerance and looking at other people differently and seeing that they're just, you know, creatures similar to us as, you know, later there's a scene where they're in the hospital with one of the the mole men and the doctor's like, well, they have a thoracic cavity similar to ours. I can operate and take, remove the bullet. And the, I guess like the hospital manager or whatever is like, no, you won't doctor. I want that thing out of here. And <laughs> there's some great dialogue where the nurse refuses to help. And Clark's like, I'll assist. Let's go. Like, and you know, Superman's there, but I almost feel like a lot of it could have worked without Superman just Clark Kent other I mean because even when he stands up and they sh he shoots and he bends the guns and uh you know I, I watched it with my wife and she she, she uh, was like wow George just commands he has a presence when he steps in as Superman and steps in and all that to say like the framing is weird because it doesn't feel like Superman the way it starts or anything. We do get a little bit of like the, a little bit of a discussion about the planet Krypton and had, cause it has that traditional opening of like a narration. And we see uh, George standing there as Superman and then it filters into the, the, the story. So it does feel more like a, a TV episode elongated than a film. But just watching it as a movie, if I just were watching Superman movies and I watched this, it would be very – because there's no big climax. Um, the mole men show up with a vacuum cleaner <laughs> is what it was, prop, you know, as a ray gun. But there's no, like, huge stakes. I mean, yeah, I'm rambling. You go. <laughs> your turn. Uh, Tag. No, no, no. It's, Tag it's all good. No. No, it's, it's it's cool to get your take on it, and you know it's been a little while since I watched it now, but I, I mean I guess I remember it fairly well. Again, all in all, I think I was well served by watching it where I did. Uh, you're right. I mean, there, it, it definitely drives home those themes of of acceptance and tolerance. And I know you said it struck as a little you know like after school, especially. And I, I that, you know that's that's fair enough. But I guess in terms of I mean it's easier for us to say that now, right? As adults through you know the modern lens. Uh, but I can appreciate, especially aimed at a younger audience in an entirely different era. You know, they were, I think, doing their best to get the the point across. And I think it, you know, it, it works well enough. Uh, yeah, you're, I, I agree with you too, though. Is if we're really talking Superman movies, I, I don't know. 
<laughs> how this really stacks up. But as 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 part of the television show, I think it definitely fits more. Even though, again, it it is it is still a bit of an outlier from the rest of the show. Uh, and I also just wanted to piggyback off of what you were saying about the presence that George Reeves has. I mean, that was one of the things that you and I talked about uh, on my show when we did the serials was that, you know, Kirk Allen for me didn't have that same level of, of presence and charisma that Reeves did where when he enters the scene and they're wearing such similar costumes, but it's like, man, I just felt like Reeves was Superman in a way that I, that I didn't. And, and so I think mole men in those instances where he's really standing up to the angry mob, I think that really comes across. So despite its limitations, <laughs> uh, you know, in terms of story or budget or, or whatever, uh, I, I think ultimately it, it, it's, it's certainly worth watching for, for Superman fans. And if anyone's a it's, fan of the George Reeves show, and like hasn't watched it, it's, it's definitely worth checking out. It's kind of like, to me, it's in that same vein as the lost episode of the series, the stamp day special, um, right. where it feels like it's part of it, but excuse me. Bless you. We, uh, we are currently experiencing a fun rainstorm today and all the, flowers got my allergies going um so like you said like it feels like it's this not epilogue but like interlude between season one and season two it's like you can look at like season one ends this is an adventure the last phyllis Coates adventure of them off on an assignment before season two kind of thing um and I think it, it works better in that framing because just watching it as it stands alone, if you've never seen Superman, it's kind of weird because you don't have Perry, Metropolis, the Daily Planet. You just have Clark and Lois in this town. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, it definitely breaks from the formula of the rest of the show in, in all of those ways, right? You don't have the, the entire supporting cast and you don't have that typical formula of, you know, starting to the Daily Planet and getting the assignment and, you know, working the mystery, working the case, the story. Uh, the fact that it's, like I said, on the DVDs broken up into two parts, that, that is an extreme outlier. <laughs> Every other episode of Adventures of Superman is self-contained. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there are definitely a number of ways where it doesn't really feel like it fits. And that's why watching it in order, you know, the first episode of Adventures of Superman is a retelling of the origin. So, I mean, it really, you know, it brings you right into it. Although the episode right after that is one of my least favorite episodes of the entire series. So uh, they could have maybe switched up the order a little bit, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I think looking at it sort of as that bridge in between the last ride for Phyllis Coates, I think it, it probably works best that way rather than really watching it as a standalone movie with all the expectations that come along with it, with the theatrical film. Um, and, and even better than watching it at, at the beginning of the series, because it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, I think the, the first episode of Adventures of Superman gives you the more the proper introduction that you would want to see. Now, let's take that because I agree 100% with everything you just said. Now, let's take that mindset and let's flip it if it had been Kirk Allen and Noel Neal. How it would – how the story – and that and knowing that they really didn't were trying to get Kirk makes me think that they were just trying to do another movie in the serial vein, but now it's a movie. And we don't have to do the backstory because we've already established in the serials. Right. You have the same two people as Superman and Lois that you know. We're going to just put them on a new adventure as a movie, and there we go. And if it had been those two cast in the role, or even – maybe even if it was Kirk you know, with uh, Phyllis, I think it wouldn't be as odd with not having anything else to really support the characters. Um, because, yeah, it wouldn't work to watch this in this series if you're a continuity type person. But if you're just right. watching movies, it's it's a little bit different. Um, but, yeah, if you're a continuity person, it would best serve watching it at the end of season one. Yeah, for sure. I know that that is interesting if it had been Kirk Allen. I, I think – I mean it's funny. Even if everything else were the same, I'd still probably view it more favorably because I guess – in the context of the serials, right? You know, we spoke at length about how repetitive and formulaic they were. It was, you know, kind of tough to get through 15 chapters of two serials. Yep. Uh, so to, to take, but, you know, overall, there, there was a lot that I know both of us liked about uh, about Kirk Allen, certainly Noel Neal for you in particular. So it's like if we had had those versions of the characters, but in a, a tighter, more streamlined story that ran for an hour, 
yeah, you and I probably would have been pretty happy with that. And, and looking at that as kind of like a coda to the serials, I think probably would have worked better for us than as the kickoff for Adventures of Superman. But I will say at the end of the day, if, if nothing else, this served as proof of concept, right, for what would become Adventures of Superman. And so I think we, we owe it a great debt. And it's, you know, it's certainly interesting and, and, and watchable, but I, yeah, I don't, I, you know, I, I can't put it in the same category as the rest of the show, which I really, which is really now has become very near and dear to me, especially those black and white seasons. They're so good. And I, I look forward to starting them actually probably tonight. Um, but it is weird because like you said, this would be kind of a capper on it. Like we weren't, we weren't going to dive into it for a very long period of time, but just because there is substance, but yet there's a lot of not substance in it to really like tear it apart. Um, but it is just interesting of it doesn't feel like the show. It doesn't feel like the serials, but then it doesn't really feel like a movie. And it's it's weird because, you know, like like I told you, I'm a big fan of the old Universal Monster movies from the 30s, 40s uh, and stuff. And just thinking about how movies, those films are paced and even them are like an hour 10, an hour five or something. And this is 58 minutes. And it just feels a little paced on it. So it's an interesting kind of peek at what was going on at that time as we shifted from serials to film. And I, I would love to find ways to know more about the production of it um, than the little bit that I discovered that it was, you know, supposed to be a movie or a pitch for a TV series. And then they would make it into a movie, which is always fun, you know, because you and I don't think it's ever talked about it. Maybe. I don't know that the first episode of Lois and Clark, the new adventures of Superman is shot like a TV movie. Yes. With the, you know, if it, cause there's definitely a shift when you get to the second episode that if it hadn't been picked up for series, it just would have been a TV movie and that would have been it, you know? Um, so, you know, you can go, if you go and you watch the pilot of Lois and Clark, you can see that because it, it actually was shot on film compared to the taping that was the rest of the series would then be done with. But all right. Final thoughts on Mole Men. What would you kind of give it out of a five star rating? Oh, that's hard. I, I, OK, a 10 star rating. <laughs> <laughs> I like the 10 star rating. It gives more flexibility for stuff that's really bad and stuff yeah. that's really good compared to like just out of five. I, I mean, look, in terms of, you know, how compelling or entertaining do I really think it is? We'd probably be on a, a three or a four. I think we we would be on the low end of the spectrum. But, I, 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 you know, and look, this comes up when we talk about some of these things. You know, this probably falls into the category of something that I, I can respect and appreciate more than I than it really lights my fire. So there's a lot of value to it. But, yeah, just in terms of, of how much I enjoy it, yeah, I would probably say a three or four. What, where would you put it? I drop it on a five. five low, all right. low, you know, going back and forth with the entertainment value, but then like the George and everything. I'm like, ah, just drop it at a five. So thanks, Anthony, for joining me on this qu quick discussion. Uh, Superman, the moment, where can people find you online? My pleasure. So digging for kryptonite is the Superman podcast. I do. It's on all major podcast platforms. Uh, and you can follow on Twitter at digging for K R pod. And on Instagram at Digging for Kryptonite Podcast. And we also have a Facebook page as well. So I hope people check out the show and reach out. And check out his Patreon for Digging for Justice, which has been a pleasure uh, monthly to listen to as he digs into uh, movies. So far he's had – at the time of this recording, there's been three episodes, and they've been a blast. So well, I appreciate that. that. The next four are the Batman movies from the 80s and 90s, so uh, it should be fun. And I'm looking forward to that. I, I really am. So check that out, everybody. And remember. What's your biggest time? We just want to say, if you've enjoyed this podcast, please check out other podcasts on the Press Play Podcast Network. Remember to check out Krypton Report on all social media platforms. Go to linktree.com slash Krypton Report. you find all of our information right there. And if you want to keep Krypton from exploding, join our $1 a month Patreon. That's right. For $1 a month, You'll get extra special content that you don't get on the main show, like movie commentaries and whatever else comes out of our mouths. So check it out, patreon.com slash krypton report.
If you are like Tyler and James and can't get enough super talk, check out these other podcasts. Digging for Kryptonite. Supergirl Radio. The Last Sons of Krypton. The Superboy Legacy Podcast. All-Star Superfans. Superman the Animated Podcast. The Aspiring Kryptonians. Always Hold On to Smallville. Caped Wonder. The Geek of Steel. And Truth, Justice, and Hope Podcast. Hey, we're going to press pause and hear a few words from our other podcast on Press Play Podcast Network. Hello, Brooks here with the Books with Brooks monthly book club podcast. Here's how Books with Brooks works. We read one book a month and then we talk about it. Classics like Stephen King's The Shining, debut novels like We Are the Brennans by Tracy Lang, and tons of other compelling, life-changing stories, one book and one month at a time. So come read along with us and then listen in. This is Dan Jurgens, and if you want to have a good time, keep listening to the Krypton Report.